special ad hoc committee meeting September 24th 2024 I call the special ad hoc committee for rules of procedure for Bussara City Council Bussara's codified ordinance chapter 111 council rules of council and Bussara's codified ordinance chapter 113 ordinances and resolutions meeting to order at 6 o'clock p.m. First on the agenda is public participation. Anybody wishing to um, talk to the ad hoc committee or address the ad hoc committee, please come to the podium and state your name and address. Kurt Fankhauser, 616 Prospect Street. I want to thank the ad hoc committee for giving me the opportun opportunity to address the committee. Um, I feel there's a lot of... Uh, well, the committees, as I told some of the council members at the beginning of this term, I think there's a lot of power in the committees, and which is one reason why I told some of the members, I'm, you're probably not going to see me at a lot of the committee meetings because I don't want to be trying to drive the committee meetings. I feel like the chair of those committee meetings should be driving those meetings um, it wasn't that many years ago when the the council president would always be sitting up there at every single committee meeting so Vicki I, I commend you for running this ad hoc committee um, and I'll get to the points here so I had a couple things I did however want to bring up for the the rules kind of some loose ends things one, where does the administration sit during committee meetings? It's in the rules currently that they, that the only people allowed be on that side of the railing is the committee members themselves. However, sometimes you see the auditor back there. Or sometimes you see some of the other in the administration over there. So if that could be more clearly defined also the second the press table well it's been used as a press table however it's totally not in the rules at all doesn't mention that table um, so if i'm to enforce the rules as is and the rules only currently have in them that the public is to be behind the railing then Currently, as the rules read, I, I would think that anybody could sit at that table that wants to sit at that table. So if you guys want to restrict that or more clearly define it or just leave it alone, just wanted to make sure that was out there. Um, third, I did talk to... I reached out to an attorney that works for the OML. Um, they specialize in municipal law because the, the absences and things like that, they told me that it's already somewhere in the Ohio Revised Code that three unexcused absences within a certain time period, council could remove one of its own members. I don't know where it's at. He was He's at a conference right now, so he wasn't able to give me the ORC on that, but I told him, hey, you know, could you get it to me at some point? If I do get it, I'll forward it to you, Vicki. Thank you. Um, fourth, um, sexual harassment policy. The city has one that I believe they use for regular city employees. However, I didn't see anything I, I, I looked, I had the mayor's office look at my file and I never signed any sexual harassment policy when I was given all the paperwork for new employees. So um, if I feel like there should be one and, and whether that encompasses all elected officials or just the council members, um, you know, that might be something that has to be brought up back at a 
different meeting because if uh, I, I know this is rules for council members only it doesn't include other elected officials but I think there might need to be something that encompasses other elected officials as well um, that's it that's the only four things that I wanted to point out to the committee and I'm going to relinquish the podium at this time. Any more public participation? Greg White, 1125 Hillcrest Tribe. Uh, I want to refer to, hopefully it's page 5 out of 11, uh, section 111.10, order of business. You guys are changing where you're granting permission of visitors to speak above the approval of minutes. To me, the minutes of the administration or the council needs to be, be approved prior to anyone speaking because if that person is speaking upon those minutes and, and then all of a sudden you guys want to change them after they publicly speak, I mean, Where's the checks and balance here? Okay. I got a few more for you. Um, in your proposed, since it's part of this group of thing, it's your uh, rules of procedure for Bucera City Council, last updated March of 2024. Number four, it says, uh, and I, I'm not going to read the whole thing. While addressing council or committee shall uh, be forthwith by the presiding officer okay, bar. Excuse me, uh, Mr. White, where are you at again? Okay, I am in your rules of procedure okay. for the Sire City Council. Last up, updated March of 2024. Okay. Number four under A, okay. citizens participation. It says in there that blah, 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 while addressing council or a committee sh shall be forthwith by the presiding officer barred from any further audience before council or a committee. Okay. What do you mean by barred? Okay. You can remove them, but you'll have to take legal action basically to bar them from coming to council. Maybe they had a wrong day or something like that. Then in number six, um, Will not be permitted to not be permitted to speak to council or committee from the chair in the audience. We see this violation all the time. Matter of fact, Thursday night there were several violations of that, of uh, people sitting at that table, um, not coming up and addressing committeemen in a proper manner. Let's see where else I want to go to. And still in six on the next page. Any person with questions concerning um, legislation minutes, regardless, encourage to submit those questions in writing to the council president or committee chair or clerk prior to the start of the meeting. So if someone comes up, my, um, I need clarification on this. So if anybody has any uh, concerns about legislations or anything about previous meetings, you're supposed to submit those prior to, and they will be read or they will not be read. It's kind of confusing here because then you say questions received after that time will be addressed at the next council or committee meeting. I think there just needs to be a little clarification there of what you're meaning. Uh, number seven, each individual addressing council or the committee is asked to identify them. But you all ask us to, I believe the term you need to add in there is stand at the podium and identify themselves like I have done. And that, that should include all visitors. Um, number eight, it's part, halfway down where it says the agenda shall speak to council on one subject at a time for a minimum of five minutes during each of the three opportunities to address council. Speaker may be allotted this is what I didn't understand. The speaker may be allowed more time or have their time limited at the discretion of the presiding officer. Okay, so do we have five minutes? Don't we have five minutes? If someone gets a little bit agitated as the chair, they take your time away? 
that's not clearly defined. You tell everybody five minutes, but then this says something totally different. And the one subject matter, and I've been told several times that if it doesn't pertain to what is on the agenda, you can't come up here and talk about it. Okay? But this council and committee meetings have allowed people to come up here out of committee meeting to talk about stuff that has no pertinent information to that agenda. Period. All right, under paragraph B, council participation. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, it says in here, council members and city officers will silence what all... What number are you at, Mr. Number White? two, B2, I'm sorry. B2. You sank my battleship. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, where it says in there, council members and city officers will silence all electronic devices. I think needs to be added in there so that they're not permitted to use them while in session. That means text messaging each other while during council meetings or committee meetings. I mean, if you're going to make them silence it, why should they be using their electronic devices when they're supposed to be paying attention? Number three, B3, where it says business casual attire during months of March through October. I think that needs to be clearly defined or restated because some people do come from work, and I understand that. But at other times... I think some of the business attire, because above there, you define <coughs> what the business attire is in the other months, but you don't clearly define it during business casual. And then in B4, barred from any attendance before council or committee, it's the last pretty much sentence. I think that wording barred, I, I don't know. I'm not an attorney, never went to law school, or passed no bar. But I think barred means that you're not allowed to attend anymore. Okay? Maybe I'm wrong. But that I think you have to do legally through a court system. But I'm not sure you can ask the law director on that. Okay, on the next page, number six, I had to look this word up because... Somebody else asked me about it, too, and I said I had to look it up. Uh, the word is S-U-C-C-I-N-C-T. I think what you really need to do is put the definition in there where it's briefly and clearly expressed manner with no f time for filibusting. I had to look that one up. Uh, number eight on that same page says, uh, or asked the, for subject. So basically what I'm saying is that in here it's asking for everything that needs to be submitted to council packets, okay, to be put online for the public 24 hours before. But I think it should include all reports, special speakers, and all information dealing with what the subject matters are during that council or committee meetings, okay, that should be put on documents on demand. I think there's more stuff that needs to be put on documents on demand that are not on there, okay? And I think that would pretty much lower the uh, public records request that people could, you know, find this more easier, more <coughs> friendly user. Because I have found a lot of stuff on documents on demand that have not been updated since 2020. Such as? Uh, the police reports, the final police reports. There is no section on there for any of the fire. Okay, so that has nothing to do with counsel. So then you need to discuss that with well, the I know, but I'm just, the... I'm just saying, if information is on there. But, but counsel is doing their thing. Right, but I'm saying is everything should be included on the subject matters that are being spoke. And that's why I go back to where <clears throat> you guys have it in here. Miscellaneous C, number two. Records will be maintained in accordance with the City of USARS records retention policy, as well as published on the City's website and placed on documents on demand. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Mr. White, I was 
writing as fast as you were speaking, is it possible to have a copy of what you have read some it's in the just, off chance? Yeah, I'll give it to you. It's just chicken scratches on my pages. That's all I did. Then I fine, just, I'll just listen to the audio recording. But I mean, I can rewrite them out for you. I no, did, that's I not necessary. All the way out. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other public participation? Good evening, Clarissa Slater, 3645 State Route 4. So I know that there was concern about developing a um, I just forgot the name of it. Sexual harassment policy. Um, I guess basing off that, um, I have the opinion that maybe a code of ethics should be drafted for a council, and that could include all the things that you want as um, social media policy. All those things could be discussed and could be put in a code of ethics. Um, however, if you look at the oath that you guys sworn, the information that's um, in the Ohio Revised Code, um, it pretty much is spelled out in there. So you swear to basically be professional. And I guess if you want that defined, that's probably the best way to do it. So I mean, you may, not, may or may not be able to comment on that since that is not rules and procedure or the ORC um, unless you're wanting to add a cross-reference or I don't even know, a section in the ORC saying that council will draft and keep an Ohio ethic or you know an ethics code of ethics and be enforced with it um, with that being said though <clears throat> in these previous conversations that we've had um, my concern is that we keep going back and forth with how do we get counsel to enforce these things I believe it would be um, if I'm remembering properly Mr. Finkhauser himself stated that there's no repercussions for your actions there's no repercussions of your actions if you don't have the ability or the know-how to have a individual who leads your meetings to enforce them. Um, so the biggest thing that I've stated over and over again is the point of orders. So I'm just expressing my opinion, saying that stop letting bad behavior slide and instead address it when it happens. That's in Robert's rules. That's what you're supposed to do. And I get not being wanting to be confrontational, but then when you're constantly being dragged through the mud for others' others and um, misconduct, you know, at some point you have to stand up for yourself. So that's just my opinion, um, and that also goes with misconduct with any presiding officer. If you have a problem with how a presiding officer is doing something, if you believe it's materially wrong and that they're not following the stated rules and procedures, you can point of order your presiding officer. You can actually, if he rules on something, he or she, a chairperson, rules on something and you're not happy with how they've ruled, you can appeal and ask for a vote from the voting body and they're allowed to override the presiding officer. So that's just a note too, that's all in, Ohio, or in um, Robert's rules. Um, but if actions keep happening that it's just staining our town, um, illegal in nature, um, I've been pretty silent on all of it, but with it being extended again, it's not gonna get addressed. With there being misconduct um, and misrepresenting council as a whole, if you are misusing or abusing your power and reflecting poorly on council as a whole, breaking laws, not following your oath, conducting misconduct in office, you have to have a way to address these things. Um, I provided you and Mr. Gobrecht um, policies um, in, or not policies, revised codes in the ORC um, I did have this um, methods of removal of public officers that I forgot to share to you. So I went ahead and printed copies. Um, in here, this is from 2022, the, L the LSC is um, the Legislative Something Commission. Sorry, my memory's not very, or my memory's not very good right now. Um, but the LSC is the opinion body of the um, Ohio General Assembly. And they 
have left this brief and placed their opinion that the only way to, if you know, it escalates to this point, removing someone from office after they've broke the law, if they've conducted misconduct in office, malfeasance, misfeasance, nonfeasance, is by um, the section stated, which is the 307 through 310. So that's the definition of misconduct in office and then removal of public officers. So the probate one's not even, according to here, um, their opinion is that it's not even valid to use locally. You would have to draft a complaint, um, ask for 15% of the um, electors on the last governor's election to endorse said complaint and then have it filed with common pleas. Now, obviously, that's like the last case scenario. <clears throat> and people say there's been a lot of things happening behind closed doors or whatever. The only thing that I've seen, because I'm up here every day, and or not every day, but every council meeting, is that I've seen a lot of people try to do their best to keep everybody on track um, and to mitigate improper behavior and and to counsel and have long, deep conversations after the council meeting and give their advice and and I've seen that and so I appreciate that you've tried to mitigate that but at some point it's like you have to state it on the record if you've exhausted all your options. I don't, I don't know what else to say to that matter. Um, but all this being said, I, I've outlined it. I hope to hear um, Brandon's opinion. And yes, I am not a, um, I am not a, uh, a lawyer. However, bringing this up, um, I was advised to bring this up to you um, by my lawyer, um, seeing that misconduct against me, or however you want to word that, was done by a member of this body using their title and their position to um, improperly use and, and contact my employer and my um, school. So that I do have a little bit of heated conversation with, but honestly, it's just something I haven't commented on much because I was hoping to get settled, but it's been continued until November 4th, so it's not going to get settled for a while. Um, so basically, long story short, I hope to hear that um, we come up with a plan on how to address um, misconduct. I do see 731.45 was added. My only recommendation to the 111 um, is under, under misconduct 3.07, <clears throat> the ORC 3.07 to 3.10 is added. Um, and finally, you are um, able to con like conduct a committee and or a special meeting to address misconduct. So sending emails about alleged misconduct to people's employers and alleging criminal and or and unethical actions is not the right procedure that's misusing your position in office to get somebody in trouble. You can't use your email from your <laughs> from your council email to represent the council as a whole and make an action without the approval of council. That's misconduct in office. And it's happened twice now by two different members. So I'm hoping that it's taken seriously that there is a method to address this behavior and it's way bigger than some sexual harassment um, policy. I do agree that there should be one, but I will relinquish the podium with that. And then if you have any questions about what I've stated, please let me know. Thank you. Any other public participation? Seeing no one. Next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the August 19th, 2024 special ad hoc committee meeting. Those minutes are not ready as of tonight, so we will uh, approve those minutes or address those minutes at our next ad hoc committee meeting when we schedule that. Next, rules of pers Oh, excuse me. Yes, Chris. Did you do a uh, roll call? Oh, no, we did not. Members present. 
<laughs> Zion Hickman, Chris Moritz, and myself, Vicki Deshawn Chair, and absent is Carolyn Shireman. Thank you, Chris, for bringing that to my attention. Okay, so now we'll do rules of procedure for Busara City Council. Y'all were given a copy of the rules of procedure. And what I did is I took the last draft that we had, which was, uh, and it really it wasn't a draft, it was, it's what was approved on March, in March 2024. So I took that and then I did highlighting in yellow of different items that we discussed back on our August the 19th, no, August the 19th, yeah, August the 19th, 24 meeting uh, to just, you know, remind us that that's what we had talked about and I'd just like to go over those and discuss others. Um, first off, under A, citizen participation, at the la or at the, yeah, at our last ad hoc meeting, it was suggested um, by a citizen that we change the title of citizen participation. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Slater, but I had written down that you were looking for it to state rules for non-council, rules for non-council or committee. And I listened to that on the... <laughs> yeah, I think that, um, the reason I stated this is because in the ordinances, and I had my notes, I think it's in here, um, it states non-council, when removing somebody, not to find it, oh. um, when removing somebody from council, um, it yeah. states... That was the section that um, I believe... The, I'm sorry, in the ordinance. Um, oh, okay, yeah. sorry. sorry. Under council rules for security, 111.21, one, 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 page yeah. 11, referred to them as non-council members. Yeah, non-council or committee members, I guess. I, I think that's what we thought, right? <laughs> Only because that would then, you know, if we're treated, if they're treated like committee, non-committee mem members are treated like citizens not inside their committee that's would be um, more clear I guess. so what are you saying that you think that a should read instead of citizen participation non-council or committee member participation Okay, it was hard for me to hear you there, Clarissa. Sorry, I forget that this isn't broadcast, like not projecting towards you. <laughs> non Non-council slash committee member participation. I don't know how you want to make that more clear, but that's how it's written in the ordinance, so I just thought it would be more uniform. And since sometimes you guys have like presentations during committee member committee meetings, not that I expect a person giving you a presentation being rude, but... <laughs> okay, my thought there is if we would state citizen participation like we have now, mm -hmm. and then we could put in parenthesis non-council slash non-committee um, I mean, you could also maybe put it as like a definition, I guess, if you want to maybe like... Because I could see someone say, well, what down. is a non-council, non-committee person? That's why I'm wondering if we need to get citizen in there. Vis well, what did, what did we say that at the podium, 121 or the 21? 1121? I mean, they say non-council members. Yes. But I guess the only thing is you have to worry about is people with special um, floor access, like the auditor, mayor, safety service director, Miranda. <laughs> I think we're. Or, or, um, I I think that we should be clear on what you mean, but um, I, I just maybe non. Uh, 
Well, what's the committee think? I think having it as a um, definition might be better than just changing the whole title of the this, this section A. Just having it as like a parenthesis or just a defined term. That would work for me too, I'm sure. I think it's like the ORC does that a lot, right? Underneath a revised code, one of the first things it'll say is like, the write out definition. So if it, if you don't want to say citizen, like non-member, and then you could, I'm trying to remember how it's normally phrased, non-member. So it'd be like the definition of non-member in this section is defined as, and then it'll tell you like the definition. I, I, you would know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I only have a undergrad in criminology, so I'm not a... So do you understand what she's saying, Mr. Yes, Gilbert? Yes, yes. Okay, then are we fine with... what he feels would be an appropriate title or... I mean, I don't want to get too bogged down in... Semantics. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, the, the bread and butter of statutory interpretation is semantics. Yeah. So it can't hurt to be redundant and it can't hurt to be clear. Okay. So then are we fine with letting Mr. Goldberg, and like I say, I know I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but I want to <laughs> refer to you rather than calling you by your first name, so I will apologize right now for not pronouncing it correctly. Um, do we want to defer to him to um, prepare the title? I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Picky, if I may. Sure. Um, just so like procedurally this is correct and there's no ambiguity or concern on how the count with how this has been conducted moving forward would it be appropriate for the chair to ask for a motion to suspend the rules that way you're able to call upon and or discuss with citizen participants without technically breaking the rules of the meeting I'm sorry, I didn't think about that earlier. Okay, so you're wanting me to suspend the rules so that you can talk while we're talking? Well, I mean, you called upon me to come up here, so I came up, but basically the way that it's supposed to, and I might be wrong, but the way that I've read and interpreted it is that you're supposed to go according to the agenda, and it lines out two sections of public participation. You did call on me, and I should have said something earlier, so I apologize, but it would there'd be a suspension of the rules because you're no longer following the agenda. I just want to make sure procedurally no one comes back and says that this wasn't done properly. But we're on rules of procedure. Right, but I mean in the agenda for the meeting because there's a question of concern of uniformity. There has been issues raised by citizens that some people are granted the floor unfairly or unequitably and that others aren't granted permission to speak so i'm just saying if you want to do this that way it's done properly in my opinion it would be to suspend the rules and allow for an op open discussion or forum okay mr goldberg what's your I believe she does have a point. Okay. And I do believe the suspension of the rules is technically the procedure to follow if we want to have dialogue. Okay. So then I'm going to make a motion to suspend the rules mm -hmm. and allow for dialogue. And allow for dialogue. Second. Oh, I guess, yeah, I second. made the motion. Oh, right, right, right. I'm like, my bad. I'll make the motion. <laughs> and we're going to start following the procedure that we've somewhat started with the council meetings. We'll ask for a roll call vote. Roll call, yeah. Mr. Hickbell. 
Do you need to do that <laughs> on a roll call? I could just say Mr. Hickman? Yes, correct. You're the chair. Okay. And Mr. Moritz? Yes. And I say yes, too. Okay, so the rules have been suspended to now allow dialogue as we continue on with our agenda. Okie dokie? Okay. All right, thank you. Since we're going to have open dialogue, Madam Chairman, correct? Cor so but I, I, we're going to open dialogue as we go down through. That's what I'm going to open dialogue about right now. So basically, if you're going to say non-council people, then this document right here, okay, of the procedure, rules for procedure of Bucyrus City Council, Bucyrus, Ohio, updated March 24th, you're going to have to change all the wording in there. Because it says in here, any person, all visitors, uh, individuals, Okay, so are you going to clearly make a definition then in 111 to define what is a non-council member? Because if not, then you're going to have to go through all of this and change wording because you're making an official change of 111 or adding to it and making a new definition. Am I correct? I'm not quite sure where you're at. So if you're changing 111, okay? Wait a minute, we're not on 111. We're on rules, rules of procedure. procedure. Okay. Rules okay. okay, but she was talking about non-council. That's what you were discussing, non-council <clears throat> members. Okay, because in 111, correct. that's where Mr. Gernert referred right. to the subjects as being non-council members. As non-council members. So, are we going to define what is non-council members? Are, so, are we on the rules of procedure? We so, are on the okay. rules of yes. procedure. In the rules of procedure, are we? Um, okay. A. 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 Yeah. Okay. Right. A. We haven't gone far. No. Nope. <laughs> all I'm, all I'm looking for is a clear definition of the term that you guys are using of non-council member. Okay, because the mayor is a non-council member, the auditor is a non-council member. Okay, any visitor, any speaker, any individual person is a non-council member. Correct. So, I think you need to clearly define what you're you're talking about. Could you could you show me exactly where we're at on this? Oh, I think I'm I sorry. Can, I think I can put this to bed. Yes, right there. <laughs> yeah. Which which one? Um, well, it's the title, it's Citizen the title. Participation, and it was suggested that, well, it was suggested rules for non-council or committee, but now we're wanting, there's talk oh. of changing citizen participation to state non-council, uh, or citizen participation and possibly then putting in quotes, <coughs> that being non-council, non-committee individuals. Okay. It's definitely something we can look into. Okay. Hokey dokey. <laughs> I just had a thought while I was sitting there and listened to um, Mr. White. Um, would it maybe be beneficial? You know, it's, it's cross referenced. So it's referenced in each, you know, the rules and procedures referenced in or the ordinance. If the concern is not a uniform definition you could probably add something in the ordinance 111 to state the definition of a non-council member is the same as in the rules and procedure that way you would reference it once and then you would have a way to reference back to a definition so you'd have one definition or vice versa technically that is true. Okay. 
number one. Number one. <laughs> yes, as Mr. White has corrected me, A1. Changed um, invocation, as you see highlighted in yellow, the spelling. Number two, it was pointed out at the last meeting that there was no reference to the fact that the visitors needed to also sign the visitor attendance sheet. So there was suggested the insertion in that number two that all visitors are asked to arrive at least 15 minutes prior to opening of the council or committee meeting and sign the visitor attendance sheet. And then it goes on to say all non-elected officials or city employees not visiting council or a committee as part of their job function are required to sign the visitor attendance sheet. So that was just merely identifying that the visitors also need to sign the sheet. And if any time um, <coughs> anybody from the public wants to come up and address each number as we're talking, the committee, feel free. Number three. Sure. Before we move on. Sure. Um, <clears throat> as this reads, then the uh, people here not as part of their job function aren't required to sign in. They're being asked to sign in. Excuse me, what did you ask again? So I'm sorry. with number two, are you saying that you want all visitors to be required to sign in? Yes, because okay. that's what uh, Clerk Wise uses when she's preparing the minutes. Gotcha. So that's so the way this reads is all visitors are asked to arrive at least 15 minutes prior to the opening of the council or committee meeting and sign the visitor attendance sheet. So that <clears throat> and includes the asked, which is not mandatory language, it's a request. So they could not do it and there's nothing you could do about it. So then what are you suggesting be done there? Just uh, everyone who comes in is required to sign the uh, sign-in sheet. Wait. Okay, sorry, I just want to make sure. I'm looking at this and I, maybe I'm looking at the wrong, I printed off the ordinance, but in the packet, I'm showing completely different language than what you're stating. Are you looking at the, did you, but here, here, go ahead. Did you get the one? Get yeah, one. That's the one I got from one. back there. Yeah. Oh, that's because that doesn't have our yellowed ones, Miranda. Okay. Okay. Yes. Is this the updated one then, or not yeah. updated? Yeah. And I'll tell you what. Is, um, he, is he looking? Are you looking at the updated one, Mr. Gilbert? Or? That's what I'm wondering if he's got the old You language. don't have what the committee and I are talking about. Okay. Um, it, so right now it says all visitors are asked to arrive at least 15 minutes prior to opening of the council or committee meeting. All non-elected officials or city employees not visiting council or a committee as part of their job function are required to sign the visitor attendance sheet. And does that state that? I'm yeah, right. yeah, because what he's saying reminded me, this is what brought up the, my question the last time we were here. It sounds like he's reading the old one. Are you reading the new one? Sorry, I'm not trying to be difficult. I just want to make sure you have the right copy. What I'm reading is dated rules of procedure 924-924. He's, he's, he's reading the old one. But in the old, oh, how do I want to say this? He's looking at my notes that, that I made about what you folks talked about at the last meeting. So take, it, take what you're looking at, and that's what he's looking at. But he's not, because what he just stated says that. But he was saying what he thought it could say. But the and is no longer there because that was my recommendation. I have my notes from the last time, but because now it reads completely different. Because what he said was and signed into the visitor attendance sheet because that was my concern was it said asked 
because now it says all non-elected official or city employees not visiting council or a committee as part of their job function are required to sign the visitor attendance sheet. Right. And then the committee is talking about adding in that the visitors also have to sign the visitor attendance sheet because that's what you brought up at the last meeting that there was no reference to visitors having to sign the attendance sheet. Correct. So as it reads in the packet, um, there's nothing that says that vis visitors would have to sign it. Right. Yeah, but you would have to ask them. I mean, would you have, could you s force somebody to sign in? I guess is my concern. Now, if that's the question, I can look into that. So I can like, look into whether we can legally do that. Yeah, because so this is like the out, this is not what the new revision updates then. This one's not. Okay. That's why I was getting confused. we're discussing what we want to revise. Okay. Gotcha. So what I had asked was that it state that, you know, you're asked to sign the visitor sheet. Because, right. I mean, you can't require someone to be 15 minutes early either is what my thought process was. But, okay, now I'm less confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we understand there what we're doing? Okie doke. Number three. There was discussion at the last meeting by Mrs. Shireman um, on having phones or not having phones at the council table. We had previously discussed that and it was decided, the committee decided um, that, well, I should say three of us on the committee agreed that you could have your phone at your table. Purpose being if, you know, emergency call, but you're not to be sitting there and playing games and and I mean, there, there just has to come a trust that, you know, someone's not going to be sitting there. And <clears throat> but Mrs. Shireman brought that up again. Um, she had also, at my request, was going to fill out, um, I told her to prepare a list of, you know, what she wanted to say and bring it to the next meeting. And um, I've not been given anything from her. Um, So I guess the committee's thoughts on wanting to still leave it, I mean, we're not going to make any reference that phones are not allowed at the council tables. Is that what we're still, as a committee, wanting to say? That's what we had decided the last time. Yeah. In my opinion, uh, anybody can see what we do up here. I mean, you can try to do this, or like it's all on tape, it's all we can videotape. Mm -hmm. You're, you're doing that at your own peril. People are going to see that you're, you're goofing off on your phone. Unless you're actually physically looking something up as requested to look it up faster than what we can on the laptop other than that. It's kind of uh, parallel to what um, Economic uh, Development did on Thursday. When I didn't have my uh, presentation in front of me, I used my phone to get my mm -hmm. presentation up for me because I had it there as well. Mr. White? Yeah, I don't have a problem with people having their phones. I have people texting other council members during committee meetings and <clears throat> council meetings, okay? And you can see them blatantly doing it right on, as mm -hmm. Chris said, right on camera, okay? So they're not paying attention to the task at hand. They're actually shooting messages back. I mean, if you want to sit your phone there for emergency purposes or whatever, or you want to use it for your presentation, I have no qualms with that. But when you have people sitting here texting other council members during council or committee meetings, that I do have an issue with. And I guess my question to you, Mr. White, would be, how do you know that that's what they're doing? Chris just said it. It's right on camera. I mean, if you're sitting there texting somebody, you're not paying attention to conversation. You're not paying attention as part of council. You're off into your little texting world and not actually paying attention to the uh, task at hand. Okay. And you know that they're texting and not doing research. You can see their fingers researching. going like this, mad man. Okay? It's, it's mad. It, they sit there and do this, or as Chris said, there's people that go down here underneath the chair and do it, you know? And I have no corns of people using it as a professional device. What's the matter? And again, that's where, I mean, my gosh, 
I you can't be sitting here and you're not paying attention. You know, that's the whole. That's the whole thing. I mean, I, I mean, like I said, I have no qualms about using it professionally. You know, for your speech or whatever. But other than that, just put your phone down. And committee meetings aren't that long. Right. Okay. Or council is really not that long. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm questioning, though, if number three should even be under citizen participation. I have been reading and reading that over, and I went, my goodness, it's been on the rules of procedure. I went as far back as to 2019 rules of procedure. Because number three says, while the council or any committee is in session, the members must preserve order and decorum, and a member shall neither by conversation or otherwise delay or interrupt the proceedings or the peace of the council or any committee or disturb any member while speaking or refuse to obey the orders of council or any committee or its presiding officer except as otherwise herein provided. I'm not sure why that's under citizen participation. Pardon? Do we not have that conversation? Because I, sorry, I'm here. So I'm not bringing well, I didn't have it on my notes that I took at the last. I I pulled up my notes from the last meeting. Okay. I do say section B question mark on number three. <laughs> But maybe I didn't share that. I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to go back in. Yeah, because the only thing I have on here is to do with phones. Mm -hmm. That was a big conversation, so maybe I let it go. But I did I did put a little bracket okay. and say section B question mark. I asked the same question, so I'm glad we were on the same, okay. same page on that one. <laughs> if I may, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, um, I think I'd have to um, agree with moving um, section um, three under A to B because I really don't see any mention of citizens, non-council, non-committee in section three. It's mainly just a reference to council and any, and, uh, any uh, committee in session as a whole. Okay. Okie dokie, then we can move that over to council participation and I guess you know as we're revising you can figure out where in the number and change the number order is that okay with the committee to allow I'm so sorry I'm just looking through my notes from the last time um, I did put in uh, paragraph four and this kind of um, addresses mr. White's concerns as well it states um, at the end, at the, I, I added just to the end as a question if this would make it more streamlined. Um, where it says, barred from further audience before council or committee and can be removed from the council chambers. And then I state, outlined by, chapter, um, by ordinance chapter 111.21. I mean, that, that, that way it's just known where to reference that. I don't know if that's necessary, but that would answer the question if. So, make, so you're saying after council chambers outlined by ordinance 111. Yeah. The yeah, two and two is one. It what were the whatever the security of is it? Okay, 111.21. One? One, one one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, dope. And I'm thinking when it talks about by the presiding officer <coughs> barred from further audience before council or a committee. I'm interpreting that to mean it's just if someone's up there and they're being impertinent, slanderous, and all, we can say, "Hey, you can't talk anymore. You need to sir, you need to sit down." And that's you know barring from further audience, barring from you know further talking, but it doesn't mean removal as a committee or a council member. It's just they're removed from council chambers. They can be. We can ask them to. Correct. Leave. Correct. It'd be kind of an absurd reading to say that. And I should I shouldn't say count. Th this has to do with citizens that they if they're being boisterous, 
and whatever, we have the right to say, please sit down, and if they don't, then there's your removal, and I believe that also is where we come up with outlined, as you say, by Ordinance 111.21. Correct. Yeah. And I think that it would be a very absurd reading to say that if you were to enforce uh, Provision 4, that it would apply in ad finitum to all committee meetings and all council meetings in the future. I think that right. that's kind of what I think Mr. White touched on, right? Yeah, about being barred. Yeah. You'd have to take legal proceedings to get someone. Correct. Barred. I think that would be an absurd reading of it, but it can't hurt to be more clear. Okay. Okie doke. Next um, is number six. I'm just going to the sections where right. we right. talked about for changes. There was discussion about public participation shall only address concerns with the city government. And when that was talked about, uh, Mrs. Slater, and, and that, when I was listening to the audio, it started out with, well, let's go with miscellaneous number five, it's circ there, and then, well, maybe, and we sort of went back and forth on that. And I'm thinking if we're talking about, and we want to state that public participation shall only address concerns with the city government, I guess my thought is that that number six, when it's talking about visitors addressing council, that that might be where we would want that to be, is in number six. under um, A, citizen participation. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to circle back around, but I found my notes from last time. You asked me how I wanted, how I thought that Section A should be named. Section? The whole section, Section A, citizen participation, my recommendation. The title. The title, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so I've noted here that the reason I want was was questioning that is because it says council participation. You guys have to be here, so I just felt like it was kind of weird. Like, in, and it's called rules and procedures. So I thought, would it make more sense to call it rules for council members, and then you could put rules for non-council members, and then de define it. That was, I just wanted to clarify that because we. Okay, real slow. Sorry. Okay. Do that again for me, please. <clears throat> Section B. Section B. The title. I had right. a note that said rules for council members, and I noted here the reason I was stating that was because it sounds weird to say council participation when you guys have to be here. It's not like you. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, even if you didn't really actively participate, you'd be here. So I was saying, would it make more sense, since this is called rules and procedures, to name that section rules for council members? And then have Section A be named Rule for Non-Council Members. It would be more uniform, like accurately. Does that make sense I'm saying? I'm so sorry. I don't mean to circle back around or confuse you. If it doesn't make sense, maybe come back to it later. But I just wanted to note that on the record. That's why I had that. Yeah, we'll wait till we get to B because it's <laughs> swirling in my head here. Sorry. Um, so have we decided where do we want to put if we even want to put it somewhere, the suggestion that public participation shall only address concerns with the city government. And I mean, it doesn't have to state that wording. That's just what was suggested, that it be made understood to the public that that's what their concerns are to, to deal with the city government, not just to come up and talk about I don't know what else you'd come up and talk about. That, that's not city government. That's what I was thinking. What else would you come to city council for or committee committee for other than to talk about city stuff? But I guess we're back to that comment that you made that, how is it you said that? Um, I can't remember. 
really impressed me, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> I mean, this, I don't, I'm so, I'm so sorry because I feel like we've repeated conversations from the last time, but it has been a hot minute. One of the things that I stated about this clause is maybe that is covered in where it says, like about speaking kindly, which I don't remember which section is the impertinent. When I think of impertinent, I think of like things that are not pertaining to city business, but if you want to clearly define that, there has been examples recently where people have come up and not discussed city business and I don't want to call anybody out because I feel like that's rude but just think back to citizen participation and you might it might come clear to you <laughs> okay committee help me out here do we <laughs> You're not on the committee. Oh, I thought we were in public. We were in the discussion. No, I said committee help me. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. You, White. You're on, you're on your own on this one. <laughs> okay. If it, I brought it up earlier. If it is about what is on the agenda, I think that's what it should stick to. Okay? Unless someone opens Pandora's box and brings up open projects. Okay? All right. So if you stick to what's on the agenda, and they can only speak on what's on the agenda, just like special council meetings, you can't talk about anything else, right? Same rules should apply here in every, every form of committees. You make it very simple. Don't make it complex. Make it simple for people to understand. So what are you saying? Just what I said. Just put the word in there, or words, that only what is on the agenda that public public participation can discuss during that committee meeting. Plain and simple. Council or committee meeting? Yeah, council committee meetings. Only what's on the agenda. But remember one thing, though. If you bring up open projects, because those are still part of the legal basis of the committee, if you bring those up, then you have that second public participation. Public participation, where you could give that person that time. And the other thing is, are you going to set a time limit like you do on council? No. So I mean, I'm just making something easier to discuss than make it like complex. I'm so sorry. I don't disagree with Mr. White about committee meetings. I feel like that might expedite some things because especially since you were unable to receive, and like I think we discussed this once that if someone comes up here and discusses something that's not on the agenda, technically as it is now, they're allowed to present it to you, but you're not allowed to engage in any discussion. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like talking to a black wall or blank, blank wall, sorry. Um, or grandstanding in my opinion because then you just sit here for five minutes and have to listen to somebody talk about something that's irrelevant however if someone has a concern for council as a whole and they're hoping to see something get brought up in a council meeting and they either aren't added to the agenda um, even though they've requested it and it's relevant to city business I don't know if you can it would be appropriate to state that if it's relevant to city business or you're asking for an action from council to state that you can't come and do that. Does that make sense what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't think I quite understand. Okay, so at full council meeting, mm -hmm. if someone requests to be on the agenda to or you know granting permission to visitors to speak but for some reason they're not added to the agenda whatever it may be but it's not irrelevant to count to city or council business and they come up and talk about it but it's not specifically named on the agenda would you then be screening or preventing public participation from addressing an ongoing issue Okay, I'll give you an example. There has been times where I have come personally and said, hey, I don't agree 
with the attitude or the rhetoric of certain issues, right? And I've came up and said that. I think Mr. White has come up and said that it has not been on the agenda. So would the presiding officer sit there and say, that's not on the agenda, see you later. Do you see what I'm saying? And what agenda are you talking about? The so council agenda? Council agenda. I don't disagree with Mr. White and what he's saying for committee agenda because you basically can't engage with the citizen participant, non-member, however you want to word it. But if it's at full council and they've either weren't able to submit something by Monday at noon or for some reason wasn't added by you know their request wasn't granted but they weren't given a reason and it's just not there or they just want to address council on a maybe a nuance or a behavior that they aren't able to do that because it's not listed on the agenda because how we, how it's being proposed is that Mr. White has stated that if you only allow citizen participants to come up and discuss what is on the agenda at committee and or council meetings, then you're limiting their ability to give their opinion on something if it's not on the agenda. Okay. I think what you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry if I'm not being succinct. Goes more to spirit of governing, less towards technicalities and balls and strikes. Right. Okay. I would say, like, if it's not, it's, even though it's not printed on black and white, if you are disagreeing with how something was handled and or a behavior and or procedurally or what have you, but it's not specifically listed on the agenda, I'm just saying that the presiding officer could sit there and say, I'm sorry, that's on the agenda, you need to go sit down. That's what my issue is with having it worded say that they're not allowed to speak on something that's not on the agenda. Does that make sense? I think I understand what you're saying, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, Sometimes I'm, I'm confused not very clear. <laughs> because council doesn't have, I mean, what, I'm not sure if I understand, Mr. White, what <clears throat> you're saying about the council agenda. That council if it's, agenda has nothing to do with it. Right. Council agenda is set. You're allowed five minutes and talk about whatever you want okay. during public participation. Or you can submit a letter by Monday at 12, before 12 p.m. to council clerk to have a letter submitted and read as correspondence to council. Correct, but okay. that's not what I understood you no, to I say. Saying, you were talking uh, about public, excuse me, excuse me, public participation shall only address concerns with the city government. That's what we're talking about. And you're saying to add, to address concerns of what's on the agenda for council or committee meetings. Okay, let me clarify that. For committees, it would be the agenda. I'm good. Sorry, Chris. So for the committees, it would be agendas, okay? But also during council, okay? You have reading of ordinances where people can get up and voice their concerns about those. That's what I'm talking about. That section of city council where you're allowed to come up and give part, part and sorry, whatever you want to call it. Come up and speak about any legislation you want during the first, second, third, emergency legislation, whatever. That's where that public participation. Plus, you can only talk about those items only. You can't talk about anything else. I think that's referred to as visitor's input, is it not? Public Always. participation is at the beginning of the council meeting for anybody to come and talk right. about whatever they want. Correct. So I think what you're trying to do is you want to delineate from general participation and general airing of grievances or questions and concerns with the council versus actual participation in specific items and right. that it has to be limited to that specific resolution. Got it. Right. Is that is that what? Yeah. You're, I mean, okay. because at the beginning of the meeting, you can say whatever you want as long as it doesn't okay. violate council rules. Correct. Okay. For your five minutes. Okay. So and then and during committees, you can come up and do the public participation before you know when they ask for it. Sure. And at the end of the committee, but then you also during regular council meetings, you have a right to come up 
and speak on any legislation that is being voted on. Sure. But you should that should only be with what is on that agenda for oh, yeah. council. Yeah. Sure. And it's understood, it's on the agenda. I know, but some and people I, like to go off record on some of the stuff. I think everybody's on the same page here, right? Yeah, yeah. I am. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm not confused at all. I'm just saying that that's what I'm I not confused. By. I don't think you explained it. No, I, I was talking about the agenda of council council and the ordinances being read and then public participation gotcha. during that time. And then the committee meetings are totally different. Okay. Understand? Understand. Okay. 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 okay, number seven. We changed the word addressed to address. Number nine, this talks about if any speaker, visitor, and speaking or otherwise shall violate any rules of council, the presiding officer or any council member or committee member shall call them to order. The presiding officer, upon hearing an explanation from the speaker slash visitor, must decide on the point of order. If the decision shall be in favor of the speaker called to order while speaking, they shall be at liberty to proceed. Otherwise, they shall not be at liberty to proceed with their speech. It was discussed at the last ad hoc meeting, the possibility of referencing the um, resource codified ordinance 111.21, which is the security section, <coughs> making reference to that in that section. Okay, B, council participation. So is this where you want to come up, Clarissa? And again, very slowly. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to... For this old lady. <laughs> so my thought was council participation just sounded... It's semantics. I'm sorry. My only suggestion was this document we're discussing is called Rules and Procedure of Council but I feel it more appropriate to call it rules for council members and then A, B. You want this to be called? No, 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 okay. no, so sorry. That's what this whole book, you know, where we're reviewing. Gotcha. So I was, my thought was it may be more encompassing to name this rules for council members because then it doesn't just focus on their participation. Okay. And then the same thing if you wanted to mirror it, non-member rules for non-members and then have the definition that's for section a that was my thought uh, happy, happy medium that would be semantically neutral would say something like council decorum council uh, behavior and decorum that kind of thing council expectation expectations of council <laughs> that, no, that no? okay <laughs> Because I did it. Is that more along the lines of what you're trying to say you want? Yeah, well, I was thinking because it was okay. also brought up about social media, codes of ethics, these kinds of things, those things that may be outside of the actual participation of them in their seat, specifically during a meeting. Well, I think, I think from a very black and white uh, thing, the rules of procedure wouldn't cover anything outside of the committee of the meeting. Okay. So like the ethics, social media stuff that was discussed previously would be only in the ordinances, correct? It would have to be its own separate thing. Right. So it like would a, not it would not fall under the umbrella of rules of procedure, rules of procedure for the committee okay. or the council meeting. Right. Okay. Whatever you guys decide is fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> B2. This is where they talk about having no food on the council tables and council members and city officers will silence all electronic devices. At our last meeting, uh, council person Shireman questioned, what are the repercussions if one's phone keeps going off during the meeting? And then again, she also rediscussed council members having no phones at the table. So I think we've already, you know, addressed um, 
no phones at the table. There will be phones at the table. Um, I guess if your phone is silenced, it shouldn't be ringing. But I know it was brought up like one time I forgot to silence my phone and it was ringing. And it was me. And I feel really bad because it went off more than once and I didn't realize it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so that was her concern is, you know, one time, okay. But if it keeps ringing during the meeting, what's the repercussion? <clears throat> so. So I kind of looked into this myself and um, Robert's Rules talks about um, incidental motions. So it wouldn't matter when the, I think it's incidental, maybe it's, no, questions of privilege, I apologize. So questions of privilege, um, similar to a point of order, you can do a point of privilege. If someone's phone is bothering you or someone's action is bothering you, you can call a point of privilege and basically say, point of privilege, you know, Mrs. Deshawn, can you please silence your phone? And then business moves on with. So that way it's not anything being held. But then at that point, you can, all your other rules can go in about like, call me and call to order, you know, so if it keeps happening, then you're, can be held to that standard as well, but if that's helpful, if you wanted to. So then is that something that we need to address within our rules of procedure specifically, or the fact that it says if there's nothing in the rules of procedure, we defer to Robert's rules? I was going to say, uh, if it's not specifically stated in the rules of procedure, it's encompassed by the rules of Roberts, uh, whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I'm it sorry. is very encompassing, and that is my understanding of reading what a point of privilege is as well. Uh, so that does track. So again, my question is, we don't need. No, but the reason I brought it up, and maybe it was a rhetorical question, so I'm sorry if I didn't understand it was rhetorical, but you said, so what are we to do if it keeps happening? What's the, like, repercussions? Yeah, that's what, yeah. So my answer was you could call a point of privilege, and if someone refuses to silence their phone, then I guess you could probably call be called to order more than once on the issue. And, I mean, I'd hope no one would get removed for a phone going off, but <laughs> I guess it could technically happen, so. Okay, so you know what you're doing. Well, if you're going to ask for my opinion on it, I wouldn't mind a uh, an admonishment provision where they would be after so much, uh, so many warnings, the council clerk would publicly admonish them, not the council clerk, the council president would uh, publicly admonish them. And is that per meeting? Yes. Okay. So if someone's phone wouldn't go off instead of jumping right to kicking them out you could someone could uh, make a motion to publicly admonish them and then at the council president's discretion publicly admonish them. Okay. Sorry, I just have a question. Are you or is that like a synonym to censorship like publicly censor thing, censoring them? Censure? Yes. yes. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of but more of just like a, an action instead of a something stated it's not as serious as a censure okay 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 hang on so we're going to allow council people to text during meetings you're going to allow that well you're saying you're saying you can put them on you can put them on silence but are you saying that council members or committee meeting, during committee during regular council or committee meetings that council is going to be allowed to text each other back and forth or citizens texting or calling other people from the audience well i guess my thought back to what i said earlier is you know we could put that in there in here no texting but how are you going to know if they're texting unless you actually get up and go over and stand? I mean, you can think that they're texting, but how do you really know? I'm just asking the question. That's all I'm doing. I'm playing, playing solitaire for all we do. <laughs> I mean, if your phone's sitting right there on top of the table where you can physically see it and it's silenced and you have an emergency call come in, 
I understand that. Going back to what I said earlier, that if you need to use it for your professional presentation because you're no. Other than that, I don't think you guys should be using your cell phones to communicate with the general public sitting out here or between each other. I mean, I mean that's well. First off, the Ohio Sunshine Laws I think prohibits the the body yeah, we're not allowed to texting that. back and forth because the public is to know right. what is happening up here. In fact, if you even read. You're not even supposed to lean over and whisper to someone next to you, mm -hmm. because. But we've seen that done before. Oh, I, oh, I know, I know, I know. We've seen it done before. People going over to anybody either side, and we've seen it done. It's all kind of, it's all on camera. We know that, and it's been done. But I'm just saying is, I understand your viewpoint, Vicky. We're not, we're not the. Some oh, third world. Yeah, we're not some third world country that's doing this but to me if you can't just put your phone down during a very short meeting or whatever unless it's an emergency call you know what then there's something going on in my book I mean because I've seen conversations go back and forth and you can tell in the videos that certain people are texting other people about what to bring up next not saying it's true what I believe to be true by watching it. <clears throat> yes. Would that also be considered a point of privilege? Like, if you notice something like that occurring, and then you can point it out, or I don't know, just from a third-person point of view, just listening in. Well, we have that written down. We're going to point of privilege. So, in other words, if I would see Zion over there. Yeah. So I could say point of privilege, and I would call Brian out and say, "What are you doing on your phone?" So I guess you could. Yeah. You could. That's how that works, yeah. But I, in my opinion, is that's where the import, the unbiased opinion of the presiding officer is where it's important. And it, there is also checks and balances in this, right? So one member constantly, she, but he or she, I shouldn't put in a certain certain chair I'm gonna get in trouble but if somebody wants to point out that a specific member continually texts and let's say they're talking to you I think of like teenagers when they're like in a conversation with you but you're trying to talk to them and then all they're doing is in their phone they're not paying attention to you if it's impeding you from doing your job then you could call a point of privilege at the same time I feel that it would be appropriate if someone in the audience has a problem with it and it's you know any in those specific times, even like if it's regarding in a council, like um, full council, the specific times that are laid out to talk about something. If you have comments on the procedural problems, I think that that should be allowed too, because someone could come up and be like, I find it disrespectful that you guys are texting and not paying attention to what's going on when it's serious. So, I mean, there's ways to hold each other accountable. I think that's what the whole thing is. It's like you're supposed to act like good standing citizens <laughs> when addressing these problems, but I, that's my opinion is if you have a problem with something doing it, at the same time, the presiding member, chair, whomever, president or committee chair could also say, okay, you've called point of privilege seven times on this person, you know, enough is enough, or, or if that is something that they want to call for a motion for the public, or you know, public admonishment, then at that point, they can ask for a motion of public admonishment and then vote on it. So then that way it's addressed and then the meeting can go on and that person has to put away their phone and, you know, hopefully it doesn't escalate to that point. But I'm just saying that just treat each other with respect and respect each other's wishes, I guess, right? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice just to come to a council meeting and not have to worry if I don't disagree, Vicki. And, 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 and I mean, I realize we have to have rules. I, I, it's just... And this is why I think what, in, in my opinion, still stands, and I think that a seminar on rules and procedures would stop a lot of this conversation because it doesn't have to be in your rules and procedures. It doesn't have to be in the ordinance. It's something that this should maybe be required at the beginning of each 
session, and I don't think the OML new officer training is enough. Like, you need refreshment on an issue. That's in my opinion, is that, that this all could have been really cut down concisely to do, you know, mock situations and practice. But that's just my thoughts on it, so. Okie dokie. Next, number three. This has to do with the dress attire. In number three, we talk about what business attire is. It's identified as gentlemen. They're to be in a suit, sports, coat, sweater with necktie or turtleneck. Um, that's during the months of November through February. Ladies during those months are to either have a suit, dress, or appropriate outfit during those months. Business casual attire is done during the months of March through October, and it's also acceptable for all committee meetings year-round. I think we've sort of got away from... And I, and, I, and I bring this up because it's been repeatedly brought up, you know, you've got your rules, you can't pick and choose what you do and don't um, follow. Um, business casual attire, I've, you know, just done some Googling on what a business casual attire is. Um, it talks about slacks or business dress pants, um, dark jeans without holes, button down shirts, Basically, I think it's more what not to wear with a business casual dress code. They say, you know, don't well-worn athletic sneakers or tennis shoes, flip-flops, stained or wrinkled clothing, clothing with holes, shorts, um, crop tops, and clothing with inappropriate logos or texts. And I don't want to, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, make an enemy of anyone. <clears throat> but this is one of our rules and I'm just thinking maybe with a business casual attire, we should, as I put on here, need to discuss what is business casual attire. Just like what business attire is broken out for a little bit we should do the same with the business casual attire. But again, I mean, the committee doesn't, that's, I'm just, I'm just bringing that up. I think having a, a definition of what a business casual attire is might help clear that up a little bit. Just like add like what we think is business, um, business casual attire or what uh, Google claims is business casual attire just so that's in there so it's clarified it's defined so then the question I'll ask is are we wanting to say what we feel business casual attire is or are you saying we want to look at what the different and, and I just pulled out one just real quick tonight before I came um, I have looked at others, and, and they're, you know, they're pretty much the same. Um, I think we could um, discuss or, um, or as we could um, adopt a definition. So is this something that you want to, on your own, look and see what others are saying business attire is, or do you feel comfortable in? Well, because I've only ever known it as I'm casual attire. I've never or, seen or it casual defined attire, as, excuse me. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Business casual, which is where business I casual. get confused. 
So, I mean, I guess we could uh, make up our own list of things that would be defined yeah. as um, business casual attire and bring them to you or to uh, Miranda to send to you if it's appropriate. But. Okay. Madam Chair, uh, the city of Osiris also has its own dress code policy that I can forward to everyone if you would like. Oh, wonderful. We could look at yep. that as well. Yep. Okay. That would be a really good start. Great. Thank you, Miranda. So I don't know, Zion. We may have to stop wearing your queen shirt. Oh no, not my queen oh, shirt. Oh, I know. It's but... like eighty percent of my closet. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything on the back of that shirt? No. Well, you can flip it around and <laughs> turn it inside out. Turn it inside out. At least you'll feel you've got queen close to you. <laughs> queen just won't be staring at me, huh? Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, I, da, da, da. Then when we get back to, so we're still on B, number 10. Just took out the word of and replaced it with the word or. And the only other thing I had is questions. It was brought up at our last meeting about a social media policy. And I'm not sure the social media policy, if one is done, would that appear in the 111, the ordinance, not in our rules of procedure? I just didn't know which document it would be appropriate. That is my understanding. Okay. Is that it would be in the ordinance, not in the procedure. Great. Um, the same thing with the sexual harassment policy that Mr. Fankhauser had brought up that he wanted um, us to consider, both for council and elected officials. That would also be something in the 111 ordinance? Correct. Okay. Was then, there? excuse me, Chris. I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, wasn't it also brought up that the city had a policy on that too, or not? Did I not hear that correctly? Yes, the city has a sexual harassment policy, and I believe Miranda indicated she was going to get a copy of that. I think this was before our meeting started, and was going to pass that on to um, Mr. Goldberg for him to take a look at. Then Mr. Fankhauser was also asking if we would look at defining the use of what we call the press table. In other words, um, who's, I don't want to say permitted, but the table is there for seating of whom. Now that, I think, would probably go under our rules of procedure more than our ordinance because we're just talking about a table. That would be during the meeting, and it would be what happens during the meeting. So I would concur with that. Okay. So I guess that's something, since we're on our rules of procedure, the table. Now I will say in all the years 38 plus years that I was employed by the city as the law clerk, that table was where the news media or the media sat. And of course now, you know, we don't, the media doesn't come as often. I think they listen to the audio recording or what have you, I don't know. Um, when we have our council meetings, those of us that are not on the particular committee that, it, and I should say committee meetings, those of us that are not on the particular committee that's meeting, we move over to that table. So that way only the committee participants or members are sitting here. Also, we've now, well, and it's, it's been that in the past as well, is the administration, like, 
the zoning administrator, if he's going to come and speak, would sit there. Um, any city official that's coming to talk, like I say, the wastewater treatment plant, when Mr. Wood came to talk, or when Mr. Dunn comes. Um, I know when I, and this is just me personally, but when I came to speak before council, when I was a, quote, visitor, citizen, it was just always understood that that's, you know, where I sat. I personally would have never thought of coming over here and sitting at that table. I personally feel that table should remain for our media, should remain for our council, committee members, administration, um, special speakers if they need to set up, you know, their uh, apparatus to give a talk or whatever. I feel all visitors, I, I, I don't see why there's a problem with the visitors, you know, sitting there. In the chairs. Also, standing committees too. Uh, like ad hoc. Yeah, ad hoc or standing committees. Okay. <clears throat> if I may, I've never really seen it as a problem who who decides to sit at the table, but I always thought like as as a you thought it was always just for the press, a committee, council, administration, that's just what I always perceived that side of the room as. And whereas the gallery has always been to me for participation. That's a good gallery, thank you. That's what I always think of what it. I, yeah. Pardon? I the peanut Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to call it the peanut gallery. That seems a little trite. So does anybody um, in the audience? <sighs> Mr. White, because I know that... <laughs> I'm going to let you decide what you want to do. Because, you know... Because then you're going to do what you told me on the phone? <laughs> I will do that precisely. <sighs> because you know why? Greg, if you would come to the please, podium, please. please. Because there is the First Amendment right. And there is, when you bring up the press, in the state of Ohio and the federal government, there is no press credentials. The Supreme Court has already ruled that anyone can be the press. Anybody who has a social media page, anybody who does correspondence or writes letters or anything, is technically the press under the First Amendment. Okay? Matter of fact, <coughs> because I figured you were going to bring this up, I made my own press passes. Okay? So, you know what? That's my constitutional right under the First Amendment. Now, you know, I understand council rules have already said anything back here. And you even brought that before, too. Hey, if I want to sit down when somebody get up, what have I always told you? Yes, I would give up and give up my seat. Okay? But I still am a firm believer, even though you're an elected official, okay? But then you're not sitting on that as we talked, and I'm not ashamed of what we talked about, because I didn't say anything objective to you, is that you're a regular citizen that is allowed to come up and stand at this podium and speak just like a regular resident, okay? You're not on that sitting committee, and you're allowed to get up. What I am offended is, is when people sit back here, okay, and talk from those seats, okay, like they have in the past. And, 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 and you've been at fault yes, to I that have. as well. And, and we've been at fault yeah, in not and, saying, but, please. Yes, and, and I come up. I mean, that's why I said I think you should have an open and frank discussions, okay? But the thing is, is you have to, you know, people are becoming more and more educated about certain things, okay? And that's why you said that's the press. The press doesn't come anymore. Hey, that's fine. But you got to remember, too, there are constitutional laws, and they don't ex 
policy <coughs> does not trump law. And I know, but Greg, I, I'm trying I here. understand where you come from. I'm not, um, I'm not regarding you whatsoever tonight. Well, um, your open form, although... Oh, we're going to get into that, huh? No, we'll wait for public participation oh, okay. on that. Cool. So, um, we're on the subject of the table. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to elaborate to the public and to this committee what it was that you told me, because I'm the individual that you That's are fine. referring to um, in your editorial or well, letter to the editor? To it. I didn't admit to anybody. Um, well, I'm mentioning it. That's fine. Um, what you told me that you would do if you were not allowed to sit no, at that I said, table. No, I said that. I didn't say that. I said the sign that someone put up. Okay. All right. We've been sitting there for months and months and months. And yes, Vicki, you're correct. You said a few times about people sitting there. Okay. But nothing was done. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, someone, except for council president, puts a sign up that says we're not allowed to sit there. Okay. That's a constitutional issue. Okay. So I'm not saying I was going to do it. I said I'm allowed to do it, then. and I could do it. And I do know an attorney in Cincinnati, and just to let you know, that is a, a civil rights attorney, okay? And they're becoming more and more and more and more because of all the crap that goes on, okay? Brian knows this. It's becoming the new specialty. I don't know if Brian knows it or not. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I, I apologize to you, sir. <laughs> but it's, a, it's becoming a new specialty in the United States, constitutional law attorneys that will take any case pro bono and fly with it, you know. And actually, the sixth, the sixth District Court of Appeals, which Ohio is part of, won't touch this subject at all. Supreme Court has, but the sixth, sixth District will not touch it yet. They won't even comment on it yet. Okay, uh, so we're... So, I mean, basically, you know what, I was offended. I'm not going to lie about it. I was offended, especially the person who was tapping their finger at the table when I looked at it. Somebody got offended me and taking a picture of it. It's a public, public place. Photography is loud and anywhere in the general public. You can record. You can do whatever you want. All right. Why don't we hold place. off and we'll okay. address that when we talk about your letter to the editor. Okay. Which maybe we can't do under public participation. Can we discuss that? Discuss the letter to the editor for public participation? Yeah. So as far as I understand it, public participation in the meeting does not include public participation outside of the meeting. So in other words, I cannot address this letter to the editor. Not while we're talking about rules of procedure, I don't believe. But when we get down to public participation, well, it's a special ad hoc meeting. And, okay, well then, I'll just wait and discuss that then at the council Excellent. meeting. Wonderful. Okay, so I guess the question is then, um, what are we going to do about the table? Clarissa? My suggestion is in all government and debate, I feel like there's always a happy medium. Um, and I feel that if the precedent would take, you know, if the, if there is a public speaker presentation um, whereas in the you know in the committee meetings wherever 
those like those things take priority over the public wanting to sit there. I'm just thinking common courtesy to the group. I don't Is that disagree. so hard? I don't disagree. I think it's I think sometimes it may and you know a conversation between council members is not wrong. If if two council members are talking about something that they're going to present to the committee, mm -hmm. that's not a breach of sunshine laws because it's not a quorum and it's not in session. Right. So it's not whispering to one another while the committee meeting is going on. It's, hey, Chris, did you bring this stuff for this this one thing that we were going to discuss? Cause we went to a meeting. Did you did you bring this? And then and then you two can have a discussion because you went to the same meeting and then you're like, hey, are you going to talk about this or am I going to talk about this? And spec, I, I understand and completely agree that um, for committee meetings, maybe that can be the, I guess the, if they're, during full council, if there's visitors that have been granted the right to speak and they need to present, then I think that that table should be for the people to lay their stuff out if they have visuals or if they need access to the to the camera or not the camera the TV or if they need and and from sitting from home it is kind of weird for someone to have a presentation and the camera zoom in on them and then there's like they're presenting here maybe one of the members is sitting and then all of a sudden you have citizens sitting right in front of them and then it's kind of hard to like see what's going on so I think in my opinion if there's a presenter at a council meeting that needs access to that table or maybe even if someone's granted the right to speak, that they get pre or like privilege over that table. And then secondly, if, if during the committee meetings, I don't disagree that something can be taken widely out of context as being, you know, I don't know how you want to word it. Not transparent, I don't know. You know, you might just hear like two or three words, but they're really just having discussion on what they're going to present during the meeting. I, I, I don't know. Lunch. Well, right, right. I mean, I, I think that, you know, I'm thinking about like a teacher's lounge or a, you know, a employee, you know, whatever, a place for you to sit, kind of relax, and I don't, dis I don't disagree with that, but I think if neither of those things are happening, there's not a presenter, then at that point, then I don't think there's anything wrong with someone sitting there nothing else is going on but that all should take priority over it since that's what it's used for I guess and um, was there another table that used to be in here that's sitting on the hallway I mean if someone needs a table because I kind of sometimes need a table could the table just come back in here and it'd be like I mean there used to be a table over there alongside where the okay. um, that way someone has coat a, rack. that way there's still a table designated for <clears throat> citizens and and you know you guys already defined that this is your space here then I don't understand when you need respite during committee meetings like having a place to sit you know I don't disagree with that so but that's my opinion okay so committee what's your thoughts on the the table I mean we could always go the unchaotic route and just get rid of the table <laughs> <laughs> I still think it goes down to common courtesy. You all can come to these meetings, everybody see what's going on. Let somebody tell us there's a presenter there. You got you got paperwork back there. It says there's a, uh, a speaker here talking about something. You can see they got a mic set up. You can see they got stuff set up there. Common courtesy will tell you, you know, maybe I should sit over here today. I don't really see why we have to have anything for that. It's, it seemed, to me, it seems like common courtesy. About it. I don't see why we have to have a rule on it. And I will agree to that. And I also. I know, Mr. White, that you had brought up that, you know, nothing had ever been said at the beginning uh -huh. of the year, and you are absolutely correct. But I guess my question would be, so if I had said to you, Mr. White, you're not allowed to sit there. You'd have been fine? I'd ask you why. Why you couldn't sit there? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this. Remember all the meetings you and I would come to and we'd sit together and we sat in the gallery? 
You not once got up and came over here, but all of a sudden twice now. Well, okay, I, we're, we as a committee are going to decide, and I guess you'll have to do what you feel you need to do, and all I'm asking for is common courtesy. I'm not expecting the same out of the committee. Oh, Secretary. <laughs> <laughs> out of you two. Excuse me? The same out of Would you like to come to the podium and say uh, that? Yes, <laughs> not a problem. The only thing I would like is the same courtesy back. That's all. Just like I'm anybody. being courteous to you. No, I didn't say that. The same courtesy. What, so to sit to there? Any, to anybody else. Not just me, but anybody. Right. Not just me, anybody. The same courtesy. If someone came in and sat down. Okay. Oh, definitely. That, that, that they will be asked to sit in the gallery. I would, if you're going to, if you're going to do that, then make the rule. Make the rule. Okay, so we've decided that that table will be for media, presenters at council, special or committee meetings, uh, committee members themselves. I see no issue with that. In other words, it's not used by visitors. Visitors that you know how to word that. Correct. All right, next. Um, should reference of the above... Oh, we already discussed that. Good. So we already know what they're doing. Okay. All right, we got that. Okay. Next. Is Ordinance 11-2024. Page two, under cross-references. Back at the July 1st, 24 meeting, Mr. Gernert was to have included reference to the rules of procedure for Busar City Council, and that just wasn't done. Okay. Um, so we're asking for that to be included. Page three. Oh. Um, there's a couple ordinance. Of course, I found that. I use my phone to pull up my notes too. Thankfully, I printed today, but my phone died. Um, on there, I, I think I briefly mentioned it to you that I said it may be beneficial to cross-reference the powers given to um, legislation in the cross-references. So, like the 733, the 705. I can't remember what it was. 733. Hold on. 731.45 misconduct. Yeah, we talked about the. Uh, that one, but there was another one. Give me just a second. Um, 733.09, which is the president, and then there was 731.05, powers of legislative authority. Right. And that's under cross references. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I'm so sorry. But did I miss that? I, I looked at your. Up, I, yeah. I asked for the updated one. 733. Yeah, it's, that, it's it's in the old one. Yeah, it should be in the one that you... I see 733.72. 731.05. You're looking under Ordinance 111? Yeah, the, the one that you sent me when I asked if you had the notes. I asked for the notes, you sent it to me. The highlight. Am I not seeing... What am I not seeing here? You got the email that I sent to you today? Yeah. Because I sent you and Aaron an email with these that we're talking about yeah. here? Yeah. This is what I'm looking at, right? Well. Oh, sorry. The, the one you sent me today, I printed it off. I, I don't see 730. Yeah, under cross-references, there's composition. Okay, 731.05, you're right, I misspoke. But 733.09 is not. Okay. Sorry. 733.09. President of Legislative Authority of City. It, excuse me? President of Legislative Authority President of City. President of Legislative Authority. And you're feeling that should be cross-referenced. Why? Because it states what their powers are. Okay. Powers and duties, I guess. Okay. So is that something that uh, we want Mr. Gobrick to look into and if he feels that that's a... Uh, an appropriate cross-reference? 
I can look into that. Is that okay with the committee or? That's fine with me. Okay, then next we go to page three, 111.04, interrupting. This is where it says, no member of council shall be privileged to disturb or interrupt another member in possession of the floor except by a call to order. Discussion was held at the last meeting, um, asking or stating if this wording is sufficient or if reference should be made to 111.22. And the 111.22 is the, oh no, the 111.22, that was the new punishment and expulsion of council members that Mr. Gurner placed into the ordinance. So no member of council shall be privileged to disturb or interrupt another member in possession of the floor except by a call to order. Miranda? Or Miranda. <laughs> Clarissa? I guess it rhymes, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm just realizing this. I know call to order, would it also be like points of privilege, like, I guess? Interrupting, call to order. So like questions of privilege, questions of order, like, I guess now I'm, I'm questioning call to order, like if someone's out of order and they have to be brought to order, I understand that, but interrupting, but point of, point of privileges, point of orders, incidental motions, technically by definition, you don't have to be, so we're looking for, recognized to do those. So technically, by the way this is worded, I would say it's probably inappropriately worded. It could be misconstrued that this states that you can't do point of orders or points of privilege or any other incidental motions. Am I wrong? I hope I'm wrong. Because <laughs> call to order is like a verb, right? Call to order being called to order would be like... I don't know. If someone's wondering. out of order? Okay. All right. My question is if, you know... Unless motion takes precedent or something, because there's different motions that take precedent to the floor. So, <laughs> okay, one 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 point oh five recognition before speaking. This is where they wanted to add in or committee. Before it just said for all purposes, save that of seconding motions. Mm -hmm. No member of council or committee shall be entitled to any privileges. We just added or committee or committee chair. Um, these inclusions were discussed at the last meeting and then discussion was also held on the possible inclusion of point of order in 111.05 since it was felt this section states something different than Robert's rules. That was you, Clarissa. Yeah, and I looked, this kind of ties into that too. And I've, I've done some more deep diving into this. Um, there are motions that, according to Robert's rules, takes precedent. Point of order is just one of them. Um, a lot of them are called incidental motions. Basically, it just happens at the time of, um, you know, when something occurs. There's a whole, there's a whole table of rules regarding motion, so I guess maybe you could reference that, unless outlined by, I don't know how you want to word that. <laughs> this table in Robert's Rules. Because <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunch of different ways that technically you can interrupt someone who's speaking. Um, so. So we're looking to... I said point of order before, but I guess mm -hmm. if you want to extend on that, it's not just point of order that takes precedent. There's other motions that would take precedent and that are outlined in the table 
I don't even know what it's called. Hold on. And this is again rather than saying out one way. I mean not saying anything and just deferring to Robert's rules. This is back to your comment that but it basically, I thought, states that the way it's worded is basically say, like, you can't. Because it's, like, speaking in definitive. Well, my, under, my, <clears throat> my understanding of the resolution is that anything that specifically conflicts with Robert's rules controls. That's my understanding. Right, so my question is, was that a confliction? That I can look into. Because if it is, then my suggestion was to defer, or have it worded in a way that doesn't supersede Robert's rules, I guess, if that makes sense. Because you don't want to sit there and have to define what all incidental motions you're allowed to bring up at the time. Does that make sense what I'm saying? That does make sense. Okay. I understand what you're saying. I appreciate it. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next, we go to page six. Voting required, exception. Upon every call of the yeas and nays, every member present shall vote unless unanimously excused. The question came up at the last meeting, what if a vote is not cast and excused? So Clarissa, was that where you were asking what if a vote isn't made and that person isn't excused from making? or giving a vote? So there's been more than one, sorry. So there's been more than one person who has mentioned in conversation with me or online that they noticed that we can hear you because you're mic'd, mm -hmm. right? So maybe you can't, when everyone's saying it, it might just be the acoustics of this room, but we can tell that there was not a majority vote. And sometimes I can tell out here too. Like we might hear two voices and then nobody else respond. So I guess maybe my thoughts, and this has kind of been adopted by some council members, is that motions requiring a two thirds majority maybe have to take a roll call vote. I mean, because mm -hmm. I think I, I discussed this with you is like if you guys are, in, if I hear no objection, are we okay with this? And if no one objects, then that's where silence is agreement but like if it someone asks for a vote on something then it can be asked for and at that point you would take like a roll call vote so like your guys' discussion here right now you're not needing to take a vote because no one's speaking out and in, in this debate like no one's speaking out in <coughs> op, op, what is what I'm looking for opposition thank you um, but if someone was ops like stating they didn't agree, then instead of just taking the yeas and nays, that way you can take a roll call. So for the record, it states who approves and disapproves. Well, I know that Kevin has started <coughs> doing the roll call, and I like that. Um, I hadn't done it at the last committee meeting because no one else was doing it, and I thought, well, maybe we're not going to do this. And then, so yes, I, I like the roll call. It's been run up, yeah. Because then we know that everyone is voting. And you know how they're voting. And I mean, there's times where there's things been caught up, you know, when Kevin was, help me out here, when he was Broward's festival director, like he was excused. From, right. Right. Mm -hmm. So like that's different, but that, I think this way, there's no one pointing finger saying, you didn't vote. Like it's just, right. and, then, and that way for the record, the public knows who's voting for what. But like things in discussion, I don't think you really need a yeas or you know you don't need to roll call it in like informal debate but if it's something where it takes a motion that has to have a two-thirds majority to get like referred back to council or you know pass so legislation we, or, excuse me go ahead couldn't we just in that section make it that roll call but that's what we're going to do you can do that yeah. and it and we just want to do roll call vote just for a motion that deals with two thirds, or do we just want to do it with every motion? Or that's a good question. I can look into that. I don't think I'm saying we'd have to do it for, for the like the minutes or anything like that. Oh, okay. I can see you know, if it's a motion for a vote to have something 
ordinance made up maybe you know, for that, yes, but or to pass it on to the next section. Okay. What do you think, Zion? <clears throat> I think having um, just the uh, roll call vote for everything besides just like a, a minute approval would need a roll call vote. And the same thing with like uh, collectively accepting the committee reports. Yeah. Same thing that, yeah. The major goodies. You got that there? I do have that. All right. <laughs> Okie dokie, page seven. One 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 point one eight. Invocation. This is on our order of business. This is something that again is on our order of business and it's something that has not been done for quite a while not just with our uh, council but previous we had discussed at the last meeting of putting in the word optional that would allow us to not have to go with the suspension of the rules if we skip it I have received several emails and I forwarded those on, um, well, one email was sent to all of us council members by an individual who, if I'll, I'll just read it. It says, I see council is restoring invocation at council meetings. Is this going to be exclusive to Christian only denominations or will it include all faiths and belief systems that exist in our community? Will there be stipulations of who's allowed to speak is it only the local churches and their choice of adherents, adherents, I'm not pronouncing that correctly, who are welcomed or are other groups going to be invited? Not all who worship attend a church. Some travel to other communities to their respective houses of worship, like those of the Jewish and Greek Orthodox persuasions. There's also those who don't have a belief at all. There's also those who consider themselves non-religious which also happens to be the fast growing religious group in our country. How does the city of Bucyrus plan on representing the entire community without discriminating against minority religious affiliations? That's one constituent that sent an email. Then I had another one stating after viewing the last meeting held on august the 19th 2024 the special ad hoc committee for rules of procedure etc i was compelled to make a suggestion about the invocation step in the order of business it is my suggestion that the invocation should remain and not be optional i suggest the ruler should state that a list of local clergy or members they may suggest from their church who are willing to attend and present the invocation shall be created and maintained by the council clerk before each council meeting the council clerk shall schedule a person from that list to present the invocation if the council clerk is unable to schedule a person from that list the council president or presiding council person shall ask for a volunteer from the visitors to present the invocation if the council president or presiding council person is unable to get a volunteer from the visitors of the council meeting the council president or presiding chairperson shall call upon the city officers and council members for a volunteer to present the invocation or if willing the council president or presiding council person may present the invocation if the council president or presiding council person is still unable to get a volunteer or not willing to present the invocation the council president or presiding council person shall call for a short period of silence to allow each individual to pray or medicate meditate according to their own beliefs for wisdom and guidance of their decisions and actions related to the council meeting i believe the invocation is a very important step in the order of business and should not be omitted either by making it optional or by suspension of the rules see now I've had a 
third, and this is from a council member who responded to one of the constituents email and she's saying I personally don't believe that a vacation should be on at all sadly we have never covered all of our constituents when we chose to do invocation in the past only certain religions churches have been contacted and very few actually responded our founding fathers kept church and state separate for a reason many have come to this country due to religious pers persecution if we cannot or choose not to incorporate all of our constituents there should be no invocation. Every time this is brought up, an issue arises. We need to stop doing things for only a part of our community. For far too long, we have ignored many different groups within our city for the sake of a few. If you wish to pray, pray on your own in your belief. One should never do this for show, and we should never use our positions in government to force our beliefs onto others. I know not everyone agrees with my views, but that just reinforces what I have stated. Also, for anyone insisting on invocation, we open the city up to yet another lawsuit. I feel that alone is reason enough to avoid such things. And then one other uh, council person uh, replied and said I'm in total compliance with so-and-so his examples are spot-on no need to bring all different religions into the mix the Lord's Prayer would be perfect the short <coughs> period of silence is the perfect resolution so I think I think I'm um, keeping it optional just keeps us out of trouble and if we were to do just a moment of silence that also works just mm -hmm. so everyone has a chance to pray on their own pray for themselves what have you mm -hmm. it keeps us out of any uh, legal trouble per se <coughs> yeah I, I agree with you I also think if we were, if we were going to do something like an invocation, a moment of silence would work for me too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I may. Um, no, you may not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> Is it your press pass? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. Can I borrow your? Um, my only thought is, um, if you call it of a moment of reflection, that would include, that would be honoring, I think you guys would be careful about how you word, how it's introduced, or the script that right. you use in that, um, because I do think, just from what I've seen and have you know, had exposure to, and I, like I've, I, I went to, actually I went to Israel and studied religion. <laughs> um, you just have to be very careful about how this is presented. I think that a moment of reflection is even nice because then if you don't want to pray or you're, you know, you can have a moment to take a deep breath and mm -hmm. realize it's what you're saying. Text on your phone, yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't have to, you know, you can't force people to do it, but I guess that that, that way, you know, I, I think staying out of that realm, you know, giving people a moment to observe um, whatever they feel appropriate, that is something that I don't think is necessarily bad. Um, and at that point, if anyone, you could probably use that if there's, uh, I see there was like a flower fund, you know, in there mm -hmm. somewhere. You could even use that as, you know, a moment of reflection for if someone passes or what have you. But that way you're staying out of the realm of identifying any specific religion. But that's just... That's just I fun. like that moment of reflection. Sounds and nice. I'm wondering if we do that, then do away with the word that we were thinking of optional and it's would just it's there and it's just we always do it yeah a little bit of reflection 
Yes. All right, next, under 111.18. Granting permission of visitors to provide input regarding how the old reads. Granting permission of visitors to provide input regarding communications and petitions, <coughs> or no, regarding the reports read by chairpersons and special committees and of city officers. It was brought up that we might want to include in there uh, giving input regarding communications and petitions along with the reports read by chairpersons and special committees. And I think the thought behind that was um, it was indicated that maybe, you know, there would be a communication or a petition that was read at the beginning of the meeting and someone may have something to, you know, add to it, what have you, and that's done after the public participation. So if they were allowed to give their input during that second, quote, public participation where they're allowed to ask about reports read, city officers, what have you. Talk so I don't fall asleep. <laughs> I've been up since. No, I see no problem with that now. <laughs> no, I don't either. I have to question how often someone's, you know, but it's there and it's available. All right. Next, page nine. I like this one. Oh, excuse me. Under 111.20, yeah, page 9, under C, uh, the inclusion of the word chamber, posting of uh, notices about special meetings on the council chamber door. Chamber was left out by me. And then page 12, 111.21. Uh, let's see, that is our security, council rules for security. And the questions that were brought up, or question, was that where it states non-council member, and that was where before the individual was referred to as speaker, that we asked Mr. Gernert or Attorney Gernert to change that and call and he changed speaker and now identifies that individual as a non-council member and it was discussed that we should uh, revise that to state non-council member and or non-committee member <clears throat> So throughout, wherever it talks about non-council member, adding or changing that to say non-council member, or I guess adding and or non-committee member. Everybody okay with uh, that? Yeah. Then censorship. Per Robert's rules, let's, they, we're talking about adding censorship into this ordinance per Robert's rules and any additions not referred to in Robert's rules. It's my understanding that, you know, we could take Robert's rules and add to that for our own. Is that true or not? That's my interpretation. Okay. Yes. Yeah, 
Yes, as I understand it, um, Robert's Rules is only the catch-all for what is not uh, expansively addressed by this resolution. I was looking at some papers later this afternoon, and they talk about, well, this one was from a city when I was getting some information uh, several years ago. Uh, Barberton, I think it was. And they have a censure rule. Um, oh, I, you know what? I apologize that I didn't pass these out. Miranda, may I? I'm going to get up here. I needed to move. I'm stiffening up. Thank you. I too. And I'll see that, uh, Clarissa, that you get a copy. I don't think I have any extras here. And Mr. White, I'll get you a copy as well. But it talks about the consul conduct. I mean, just, I don't know if this is something maybe you want to look over and then. Then our next one. But it talks about decorum. It says a public meeting must be conducted in an orderly and expeditious, ex expeditious manner while maintaining discourse and deliberation in a civil, respectful, and cordial manner. Number two, disruption at a public meeting. No council member may engage in conduct that disrupts a public meeting by behaving in a disorderly, contemptuous, slanderous, profane, or abusive manner towards any other council member of or any member of the public. Treatment of the public. No council member may show signs of partiality, prejudice, or disrespect toward a member of the council. Questions by council members to a member of the public addressing council should seek to clarify or expand information. No council member shall be belligerently challenge or belittle a member of the public addressing council. Social media. Council members who use social media to communicate with the public should do so in a respectful and professional manner. Council members should not defame, slander, make threats, or make posts that violate this ordinance. A council member who violates the council rules at a committee meeting, council meeting on social media, or a council of the whole meeting is subject to censure. Censures defined to express severe disapproval of someone or something, especially in a formal statement. Then there's a censure hearing. Any council member may ask council that another council member be censured. A majority of council must vote to hold a council of the whole meeting for censure. One vote shall be taken. Failure to receive a majority vote is the end of the censure discussion of the event presented to council. Following a majority vote to hold a council of the whole meeting for censure, an accused council member may defend themselves at hearing. An accused council member who wishes to hire representation may call for a one-time continuance of the hearing to allow for retention of representation. The accusing council member shall present evidence supporting censure. The council of the whole may ask questions of both the accusing council member and the accused council member to determine if censure is appropriate. At the conclusion of the hearing, council of the whole must vote by a two-thirds majority to find censure appropriate. At the conclusion of the hearing and following a vote to censure, council of the whole may find the original request for censure was unwarranted. Council may then vote by a two-third majority to censure the accusing council member for bringing an unwarranted claim of censure before council. Unwarranted is defined as not having any serious purpose or value. I don't know, like I say, that was just something I found. I don't know, have you found any? I sent a bunch of them, but I don't know where, you know, I got too much paper. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I think this is something that we were talking about, right? That we wanted to set up a a censure I, rule? Yeah, I think if I'm remembering how the conversation went is that the concern was that there's a lot of 
unresolved things that happen in this chamber between members, um, things that probably shouldn't be happen or happening, or where the either the you know the chair and or the presiding officer or president hasn't um, I don't want to say squashed, but you know appropriately addressed as being breach of procedure or, or decorum. Um, and I think that the best course of action is for these transgressions to be able to be addressed. So censorship would be important. Um, I do also think that, um, you know, and maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but that kind of comes into the penalty. Um, and there is like a reference of the investigate, like in the ORCs, it states that the legislative body does have investigatory powers and can issue subpoenas and a compel counts or compel testimony. That's the word I was looking for. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I could see the word, I just couldn't couldn't think of it. Um, but I do think that sometimes behavior escalates past that. Um, and that's where I guess maybe you have to protect the body from the disruptive minority and you know that's a whole other discussion that I've sent information on um, that when I emailed I don't know if I emailed everybody I think I might have just emailed you too I'm sorry the um, that pamphlet I handed you before the meeting started oh yes <clears throat> that uh, the very last page talks about municipalities the members brief think that you know states you have the, the ability to govern yourselves and I don't think that even Robert's rule says that like severity I think is important um, or they state severity is important um, but the it's titled recall for election elected municipal officers and then it outlines that according to the opinion of the LSC that it's only that first section that's eligible. So that maybe could, I don't know where you want to have censorship. Maybe that's penalty, I don't know. Or where you want to have censorship, oh my gosh, that's such a hard word for me. Censorship stop and penalty start. I guess that's the question too, but. Um, but I also think you can't have people unilaterally making decisions and completely bypassing the authority of the voting body. So I don't know how you want to muster that. But Well, this is a good rule on its face. However, it's hard to judge it by without seeing what surrounds it. Yeah. So where did you pull this from? Um, several years ago <laughs> on the ad hoc committee, um, I was uh, contacting various municipalities throughout the state of Ohio to find out how many minutes they provided the visitors to speak. And Barberton sent me their whole rules uh, so I could email or scan that and email all that. I just pulled out this censure part. Sure. The problem is most, most rules tend to, by nature of human touch, mesh with the rules as a whole. So taking it out and trying to jam it into our rules okay. means that it wouldn't flow as well. So without seeing the rest of it, I don't know what else is in the rules that need to be there to support it. Okay. Not a problem. Does that make sense? That yes. Excellent. Okie dokie. Next, 111.22, punishment and expulsion of council members. At the last meeting, I believe, Chris, it was you that question where it talks about to be hurt. Let's see. Well, I'll just read. That. Council may punish or expel from a meeting any member for disorderly conduct or a material violation of its rules. 
No expulsion shall take place without first having the disorderly conduct or rule violation be attempted to be remedied through a point of order pursuant to Robert's Rules of Order, the concurrence of two-thirds of all members present, nor before the subject matter has been member has been given an opportunity to be heard unless the circumstances pertaining to the disorderly conduct do not allow such opportunity. And Chris, I believe you were asking for a little more elaboration on well, what are those circumstances right. that wouldn't allow such an opportunity. Um, where it talks about before the subject matter has been given an opportunity to be heard unless the circumstances pertaining to the disorderly conduct do not allow such opportunity, what would those circumstances be that wouldn't allow? And I suppose it's just the whole steps the concurrence of two-thirds before the subject member has been given opportunity to be heard. This was new verbiage that Mr. Gurner had put in. Well, it sounds to me like it's a range. So higher than disorderly conduct, but lower than pandemonium. Somewhere in that range, would prevent you from being able to conduct the procedures yep. due to not quite pandemonium, but more <laughs> than, oh, not quite pandemonium, but more than disorderly conduct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is that where we want a definition of? I recommend that. Okay. Yeah. I think I mentioned this, I worked in prison for four years and we, uh, the police also use this um, escalation of force. <laughs> you know, when it, when you do this, what are you allowed to do? I think this kind of translates a little bit. It kind of runs along that line. Obviously, it's not, no one's going to be throwing fists. I'm not saying that. <laughs> what I'm saying is that, uh, like, if someone is escalating, you can take a preventative measure one step higher than what they're escalating to. I think that's probably, does that make sense what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So if someone is beyond disruptive, but they haven't yet, that kind of fits, I guess. So that, that way you can take a measure to mediate or prevent any further escalation of the situation. I don't know how you want to word that. Good luck with that one. <laughs> okay. And then I guess I was kind of confused because we discussed, I didn't realize this, we said punishment. But then we also said penalty. Excuse me. So on here, one uh, one eleven dot two two, it states punishment. Right. Now again, this might be a semantics thing, but I remember going back to when um, Mr. Gurner, or Attorney Gurner, originally we had this discussion before we saw the this revision of the ordinance. He talked about the 111.99, but I'm questioning now, is, he, is just a synonym issue here, punishment and penalty? Well. Is that the penalty? Um, um, he, he had, we, oh, no, the notes we I about, had was, he was going to put in a penalty clause, but he didn't. Yeah, because that was where, like, you know, removal of, you know, privileges, like committee meetings, removal from committees. That was, was that the discussion? Well, I just know that 
I had on my notes that he was going to do a 111.99. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know if he added the 111.22 instead of the In place of the 111.99? That's just a thought that That's I just had. Like to me too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that then I don't know. And I guess that kind of, that's where I guess you're going to have to, uh, there's something that maybe I've, what, where I've read in Robert's rules, and of course, like, you know, this is the default. It's not what, um, this kind of summarizes my thoughts, though. It says, formal disciplinary procedures should be generally be regarded as a drastic step reserved for serious situations or those potentially so. Um, proper and tactical handling of the case of the prime is a prime of port importance it's usually the best interest of the organization to first make every effort to obtain a satisfactory solution to the matter quietly and informally so my thought is like that's where like an escalation of i don't know how you translate that into law but or into or the ordinance i mean it is law um but you could maybe put something in there like upon the discretion of the council for serious matters, then they can, you guys can move to do whatever you find, see fit. You know, I guess you're not going to give someone a slap on the hand if they stab someone in the neck, you know, like, I mean, obviously not in council, but you know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like maybe the penalty matched the offense, I guess. But I think that's the most important because you don't want it to be like, I also feel like all of this needs to be done by, you know, a two-thirds um, <coughs> majority. That, that I think that's important, too. That, and, and then my only other question is, this has come up, but when a member was removed from the council meeting, they were allowed to vote for themselves? And I don't know if that is when a member was removed, there was a motion to remove a member from council mm -hmm. meeting. That member was allowed to vote for themselves. Oh. Is that a situation where they be, <coughs> shouldn't be allowed to vote for themselves? I don't know if that's a conflict of interest. That that's a question that I had, and that's more my personal, I guess, question. I don't know if that'll come up, but you hope not. But <laughs> okay, doke. Chapter 113, on page 13, same thing under cross-references, um, putting in the rules of procedure for Gusara City Council, just like we did under 111. Mm -hmm. Then on 113.01, um, er, included the word courthouse. Crawford County Courthouse Digital Law Library. That was a word that I had left out. Page 14 under 113.02, just the adding of three words, which I had also left out on the original original. And the wording would be that legislation, copies of the request for legislation form are distributed to the committee chair or anyone requesting. And I do wish to say thank you to our former council clerk, Rebecca Warren. She had uh, mentioned on the Facebook post that at the last meeting, I kept referring to Scribner errors. And the correct pronunciation is Scribner errors with a V. And I was using the B, so I thank uh, Rebecca for bringing that to my attention, and hopefully I won't make that mistake again. It's kind of ironic because a scrivener's error is just a simple mistake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, I just said mistake. But they they used that throughout, so I thought, okay, I'll use it, but I used it and didn't pronounce it right, so... That's it for the ordinance one one or ordinance number eleven dash twenty twenty four our proposed ordinance dealing with chapter one 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 and one one three. I would like to, however, if I may, move back. One thing I forgot under rules of procedure for Bisar City Council. I had received an email from. Um, 
Miranda, and she asked, um, she said, I would like to request that notification of absences, in parenthesis, attendance of members, is addressed at the meeting tonight as it will be beneficial to my position as council clerk. So I think that's something that we want to address in our rules of procedure. And Miranda, do you want to elaborate a little? I'm assuming, well, I'm not going to assume, you say. Um, so my office keeps and maintains all of the attendance records for all of you. Um, so it would just be more beneficial if I knew ahead of time about the absences and then could account for it. And I know in previous we've had instances of no quorum or lack of quorum and it would be beneficial for me to know those things ahead of time as well so that the proper notice can be given to uh, not just the members of council but also the public as well. <clears throat> you look like you have a question for me. No. I'm thinking. So I guess that's where we need to come up with some verbiage as to when does a council committee member oh, goodness, sorry. contact Miranda, you know, I mean, is it the day of the meeting, 24 hours before, I mean. You get the emergency thing too. Or yeah, I, yes. I was going to say, that would be up to you guys. If I may. Reasonable yes. notice. What is, would a, a, a reason? A reasonable period of time, unless otherwise explained, like as an emergency, etc. You know, like some of these things you can't account for ahead of time. Like somebody, I mean, worst case scenario, gets in a car accident on the way here. You know what I mean? You and of course we're back things. to what I may think is a reasonable period of time. Right. Right. Which is what I was uh, just about to say. A happy medium would just be, say, a reasonable period of time and let that be determined at a later date by the courts if it ever comes up. Okay. You're okay with that. Yep. <laughs> yes. I have a couple questions since we brought up absences. Okay. Um, I don't disagree. I, I think if you have a if your council clerk is in in charge of tracking the absences and why and then they're you know, maybe it being acquired by third parties of why <laughs> that maybe the best thing would just be for all absences to go to her um, instead of like it being like that be her administrative duty as council clerk, right? Because I know I know before there was talks that it was like council president or like maybe another member or oh, like no we y oh. yes oh, okay. yes okay cool that Miranda will be the one that council members committee members are to contact and say we're not gonna be able to attend and I know there's never you've never a members never had to say why they've just stated I won't be there right um, so this is where you're getting into like I'm thinking of like employment law. I'm thinking like HR. <laughs> I don't know what if um, attendance is, if Besires City has an attendance policy for their, any of their employees, but maybe it would be in, in light of recent events. I'm not saying that someone has to provide a doctor's note or anything like that, but maybe it would be beneficial for like a general understanding. I mean, and I'm not gonna pick on you, but I know you won't care. But like, you booked a flight before you even realized you're gonna have this position to go on a trip. It's not like it would be fair to you to take a loss, you know. On, right. So, for my understanding, like that is something that's pre-planned, you know, like a pre-planned something that before you were even, you know. But like, I don't know, just saying that that's where you're crossing into what's considered a valid excuse. <laughs> so. Well, and see, I don't know, like to say what the city does with their employees. I mean, if someone, I don't know. I mean, you're not an employee, but then it, people are so quick to say like, well, we pay you with our tax money and we voted you in. Yeah. So then at the same time, it's like, 
a level of transparency just so the public's not thinking I'm not saying like you have to say you have an ongoing serious medical condition and divulge your you know entire like I health did on history <laughs> but you know just like I don't know because the only other thing that and we talked about this is that what's the de definition of a regular council meeting mm -hmm. because like Robert's rules states a stated or regular council meeting and then Sunshine Law says all regular meetings have to be, a regular council meeting, the regular meetings have, are, the definition is they're posted or scheduled mm -hmm. at the beginning of the session or the beginning of the year. And we do that. <clears throat> right, so my question is, it, that includes committee meetings, so then that's where I think you're getting into a definition of where is that stated, because if a regular council meeting includes committee meetings, then you talk about how long someone's been absent, 10 meetings racks up a lot quicker than... Well, and I, you know, I had asked about the opinion that you had given. Do you to uh, share my opinion with her? Uh, you may. I did send her a copy of it. That's why I didn't. I, I don't think I received first. it. Sorry. Pardon? You I didn't know. get it? I, maybe you sent it to me and I missed it. I'm sorry. Was it in the same email today? Oh, no. No, it was last, uh, it was last week. Because I, I, I put in there that, you know, I had checked with... Uh, Mr. Grobrick first to I'm, make sure that I had permission to remove that. I might have that. missed it. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you mind sharing with me? Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's what, four pages? I think. Uh, <laughs> cliff notes? <laughs> yeah. No cliff notes. Okay. I, my opinion will speak for itself. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll yes. look out and see if I can find that. Yeah. So. Um, okay. I think that's all I have on that point. So we understand what we're going to do on um, rules of procedure as far as with uh, us notifying Miranda Correct. when we're not going to be present. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Okay. That's pretty much. Yep. I know this has been finalized, so like you can't hold. This is not passed legislation; it hasn't been voted. But I think I appreciate the time that everyone took on this because I think that these are things that probably should have been ironed out for years, not just like put on your guys' laps, you know. Um, but I think with what you have, until it passes as legislation, I encourage the council as a citizen to find a way to address ongoing issues because they're these issues that are occurring at council have long-standing impact in the community um, there's can't there's camps that have formed of opinion because the process hasn't happened here so I just encourage the discussion today be looked at and the issues be addressed and how you are allowed to address them given what tools you currently have so that's my parting note thank you i know the last time that chapter 111 and 113 were amended was September the 1st, 2020. There was one amendment done on June 1st, 21, but that was just um, adding in, was either adding in or deleting a duty of a committee. But one of guts there, where there were actual change, change, changes. I mean, September 120, so it's been almost, well, it's been over four years before you know, those two chapters. It seems like it should have been done a long time, more than this, mm -hmm. four years ago. It was started and then it fell through the cracks. And unfortunately now with technology and like I say, the social media and all, it's just not as simple. But anyhow, we will, Get it done. We'll get it done.
We will. I know one thing that I am going to suggest is, and I know everyone knows that I've been big on not doing legislation as emergency unless it absolutely has to be done. I mean, if, if it doesn't, you know, there's the three readings. It gives the public, you know, the time to come and talk. As it's been pointed out, you know, this group for nine months, we've been working on this. So I'm thinking that when we finally get a draft that we want to present to council that we might consider passing this as an emergency so we can get it on the books and have something that we can you know clench our teeth into because if not I mean we're looking at like two three months and we'll be it'll be next year you know just a thought I mean it, will be up to the well I guess it'll be up to us as a committee how we want to request it but then council can always change whatever we request yes Clarissa my only thought my, my thought is I don't disagree with you because I feel like this was long overdue anyway and I think we had this discussion though you guys kind of inherited a mess like, <laughs> well, and I'm thinking it, with all the meetings we've had if somebody's really interested that's what they would have been say. coming yeah. to I mean, I don't think you That's give any right preferential now. treatment to me or Mr. White or anybody that, it's not like I was given special privilege to come here. Like, I initiated interest. You included me because I asked to be included. In the, Mitty did, yes. Well, right. But I mean, in the, in the yes, correspondence right. emails, as, as oh, chair, yes. yeah, you included me. And, and I do appreciate that, but like, I feel like this is the bread and butter of what everything else can happen with. So I feel like this is very important, and I feel like even now, still, this has to be another revision, so there's going to be another meeting. Yeah, oh, yeah. And there's been tons of pe time for people to put in the input. And at, at some point, you have to say, we have some serious things that we need to address yeah. and you need a plan. So my opinion is that you, that's probably appropriate. But. Okay, thank you. All right, if we don't, let's see, I think we covered everything. So, make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Public participation. No, I just did the public participation. We have to. Yeah. You, know, you suspended the rules, so technically you don't. What's that? You suspended the rules, so technically you don't. Oh. So, hey, if no public participation from the audience, then we're fine. I move to adjourn the meeting. Now, see there it says set up wallet. Why does it say that? 853. 853, I adjourn. Thank you.